Alright, so last time I modeled this lion head in Blender, and today I'm going to be doing some test prints on the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K. But before I get into that, I need to do quite a bit to this model to get it ready for 3D printing. So currently this model is made up of several different objects that I have in the scene, uh, just to kind of make up the things like the teeth and the eyes. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just go through and select each one of these objects and apply any modifiers that I have on them. Because you can see that I have some objects that have some like subdivision or mirror modifiers on them. So I'm just going to apply these from the top down over in my modifier tab. And I like to do this step first just because I'm going to be adding these models together and Blender doesn't always like adding models together uh, when they have modifiers on, so applying those modifiers first just helps to avoid any glitches. Alright, next I want to work on combining all of these 3D objects into one model that can easily be exported for 3D printing. So I could go through and use something like a Boolean modifier, uh, but for now, I'm just going to go through and hit shift and select each piece one by one and join them together by hitting control J. All right, now that I'm working with just one object in my scene, uh, the next thing that I want to do is clean up the back of this model and cut off all this excess that I'm not going to need. Uh, I want this area to be flat so I can easily solder it to the head of the ring. So to do that, I'm just going to drop in a cube by hitting Shift A and selecting cube. And then scaling it up by hitting S and moving it just behind the head. And the idea is that I'm going to use this cube as a cutting tool to clean up the back of the head. But before I go to do that, I need to remesh this model first uh, because right now everything's just joined together and it's not technically one geometry. Uh, so if I were to use a Boolean modifier on it right now, it would just end up giving me some errors from that geometry overlapping. So to fix that, I'm just going to use a remesh modifier, which should take care of any of those overlap problems. Now I can just lower the voxel size to get that resolution back around the same that I had before. Now I can go ahead and apply this remesh modifier. And now I can do my Boolean operation by just selecting the cutting tool first, in this case the cube, and shift selecting the object that I want to cut. Then I'm going to hit shift control minus on the numpad to do a quick difference boolean. All right, now it's looking pretty good. The next thing I want to do is because this piece is so small, I actually want to print it with a sprue attached just to make it easier to attach to a sprue base later on for casting. So this isn't something that's going to be necessary for everybody, uh, but I have found that it is a pretty big time saver, especially with small pieces. So I just reposition the model in the way that I want it to sit on the sprue base and then dropped in a curve to use as my little sprue attachment. And this is just a regular curve that has had the depth turned up like I've showed in previous videos. And once I had that in position, I just turned it into a mesh and attached it to my object in the same way that I just showed. And after attaching that sprue, I then remesh the model one more time. And the last thing that I want to do is actually use a decimate modifier for the model to lower the overall poly count and just make it a little bit easier for the slicing software. So I'm going to set that ratio to 
And the really good thing about the decimate modifier is it does a fantastic job at lowering the poly count, but also keeping all that detail in your model. So you can see right here with the areas that have like the grooves and the hair uh, have more vertices than these flatter areas that don't really need quite as much geometry. So once that decimate is applied, it's now ready to export as an SDL file and drop into a slicing software. So here's a quick test print of the model in some castable resin. And I'm going to be finishing up this project in a future video, but I wanted to make sure to show the steps for preparing a model like this for 3D printing. Uh, because it can be pretty confusing, especially if you're new to the process, but it's really important for getting a good usable print. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.